Right, thanks for meeting us. It's great to have you here, John. Chad, welcome. Yes. Welcome to Santa Cruz. Yeah, so this is uh, unbelievable. So this is our first podcast ever. Uh, Make Pots Great Again, yes. what, what we're going to call it. Uh, so we thought we'd go big or go home, and you guys are gracious enough to have us. It's uh, it's really unreal. I, I got to tell you, so I did a boatload of research for this. Probably watched every podcast, every interview I've ever done. My favorite one was actually sent to me by Rich Froning. So like the name drop. Yeah. It was good. And it was Girls Gone Wad. You did it uh, right around January-ish. Um, and uh, I listened to it, and uh, I messaged Rich back, and I'm like, oh my god, he says fuck a lot. And Rich goes, yeah, it's a little distracting. So I counted it, and I think you said fuck over 75 times. So in order for this to be successful, I need you to go all in. Uh, and, 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 yeah, there you go, there you go. There you go. <laughs> So we'll, we'll keep track uh, as it goes. But um, so we're, we're just really super excited. So I guess yeah, here, here's what goes through my mind. I'm thinking, like, is this a trick to get me to not say? No, <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to go all in. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so for those that are going to be listening, not watching, we're in the uh, the new set. And so you know, on the infamous couch. And I guess that's, you know, kind of my first question is um, how did, you know, how'd you come up with this? The kind of the, all in the family thing was that what this was i i had left instructions that it should be a, a every man's kind of living room you know uh, grandma's living room not uh not steve jobs the living room. Mm -hmm. and uh, i said like all in the family and so we found that set in uh, google images and uh, i've got pretty creative tremendous creative staff and it took them no time at all to put this together so here we are. Welcome to my living room. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I, you know, I I get messages weekly about the couch. People love the couch. I mean, people love to make fun of the couch, but they love the couch. It's like it really creates a lot of conversation. I think the videos you have of the, the seniors in here working out uh, is uh, inspirational for a lot of people. Uh, how did that come to be? Like, how, how what was the genesis of that? We had an insurance type contact us and share with us that uh, uh, they were they had held a, a compelling actuarial evidence that supports my contention that uh, we sit in unique possession of an elegant solution to uh, the world's greatest problem chronic disease and in talking about uh, how it is that we could broaden the impact of the CrossFit stimulus um, it became almost instantly um, uh, clear to me that the idea of bringing the people that had the, the greatest need um, to the gyms in large numbers is a pipe dream. Um, there are a lot of constances out there. You know constants from, uh, from uh, uh, David Rosario's gym from CrossFit Brooklyn? And by the way, at the last uh, L2 I dropped in here in town, I got to meet Constance's son. And uh, what a great kid. It was really neat to do what he's But uh, uh, there, there won't be a, a huge migration of, of uh, Constance's to the gym, but I've got a large community of people that are very close to people and love someone, and this looks like that person's home. And Jan 1, when this went up on the site, I got a call from uh, uh, Murray Carpenter of the Washington Post. He's, uh, we've spoken with quite a bit. And he was really wanted to know where the set came from. Where is that? And I, I told him that we built it. Uh, he says, oh, OK. And I said, well, I did a funny thing to call and ask about. He says, well, he, it, he thought it was his parents' home, <laughs> was what it was. And I asked him where they lived, and he said Long Island. And so I knew we'd hit it on the money. Um, and, and what do these people need to do that live in a place like this and are, and are having trouble because of sitting there and watching that? You know? Uh, what we need to do is it's, it's an intervention that needs to happen. And who's going to do it? Well, I've got, uh, got uh, 15,000 affiliates. I've got 175,000 L1 trainers. And there's a two to four million crossfitters. Any of them can do that. Can do that. And so, well, what does that look like? Well, I think it looks like 
going to mom and dad's home and telling mom, hey mom, get the fuck up. You know, like you gotta stand up, you gotta stand up. And we're playing with elements, with protocols, uh, morphing them into wads. Uh, and this decontextualizes the movement patterns, the benefit, the need from the box. It's a, it's a different thing, it's a different thing. Will this put people in the boxes? It has already crazy enough. There have been people that have seen this and said, I'm going to go to the gym. Because they're not going to exercise in the home, which is fascinating me. But I didn't, I didn't have that need. What I, want, what I want the world to know, what I want the, the, the crooks from the ACSM in partnership with Coca-Cola to know is that CrossFit is in the home. And, uh, and uh, this, is, this is my response to exercise as medicine. Um, uh, we have, we sit in unique possession. And what, what's unique about the possession? Uh, other approaches to chronic disease are, are, are you know, and, and, and programs to combat it, efforts to reduce disease and its cause are all theoretical. Some of them are great ideas. Warning labels, taxes, education programs, wonderful ideas. Not a one of them is doing anything. CrossFit is. And so unique in the sense that it's not a theory, it's a fact. The numbers are growing, it's viral. Um, elegant in the sense of marked by simplicity and efficacy, and the problem is, is chronic disease. And the solution starts right over there, that's the refrigerator, right here, sit on your fucking ass, and the fucking television. There's a few more fucks for you. There you go, that's great. That's the problem. And, and my training cadre, the CrossFit community, my affiliates, we're all eminently capable to come up with, Mom, up now, stand up, stand up. Now, you're not, we're not gonna put rowers in the living room. I know for a fact that my mom does not want, my mom's 86, 87. I know she doesn't want a rower in the living room. Um, I know she has no interest in bumper plates or, or a bar. Uh, but we thought maybe we could get away with a water jar. And you know, that's not, it's not radiator fluid. We put water in and you couldn't see it. It looked empty. And so that really wasn't the point. So we colored it. And like, you know, we, I said, hey, what color do you want me to use? Like yellow would look like pee, red like blood, you know? So we went with the blue. But uh, we could conceivably bring a jug into the house. We sure the hell can stand up. Um, we can, it, it, well, we're really proud of this. I am, I speak for everyone's pride. But, but I don't want to take sole credit. Um, is the goal to take the people that you're getting off the couch to get them into the box, or is it to be, uh, a program for the people to do these exercises in their house? Or both? I have, I have, will it? Put people in the boxes, yes. Probably in numbers like uh, the games put people in the box. Sure, it will happen. Um, people come to the box because someone brings them to the box. That's the only way. Everything else is a, is a dream. From Groupon to flyers to ads, to radio spots, all that shit. It's all a joke. Um, anything that brings large numbers to the box, all of a sudden, is going to be bad for the affiliate. Okay? You don't want a bunch of people showing up which means it's constant trickle of them. And it turns out that the optimal system is the one by which your clients are getting such a fucking positive result that they finally drag somebody by the arm and they become hooked. Mm -hmm. A Harvard business professor said, CrossFit apparently is like Pringles. Um, once you've eaten, I, I, don't, I don't know much about Pringles, but I like, I like the reference, I understood what he's talking about. It's something you're doing, you don't even know why anymore, it's just part of who you are. Uh, no, no, the point is is that is that the intervention needs to happen in the home and that we can do it in the home and we can show you how. And so on the days where the home's featured, have you noticed the videos, the food? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that, is, that is the other component. So we're addressing that over there, the refrigerator. And we're talking about what you might do during, and, and these are gonna evolve into room, into, into workouts, as we say, routines. It just has some kind of fell back into being a gymnast. Um, we're building up the elements and we're putting these together in combinations. We have to be careful. You can't, uh, you can't say three rounds of anything because for someone that's, that may be way too much, the, we 
Sat, Pat, Joe, uh, Brian, a bunch of our big brains got together in a room and we tried to create it. We did create a, 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 a Gaussian distribution of, of, a, of a, 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 what would a Gaussian distribution of, a, of capacity look like, you know? And so you got people that are uh, marginally ambulatory, right? You know, can't get up off the couch without help, all the way to, uh, to uh, uh, Matt Frazier's of the world. And so you kind of break this up into what looks like, you know, F, D, C, B, and A fitness. And so out there, you F fitness, well, that, sounds, that sounds horrible. I think I'm close to F fitness. Yeah, I mean, you're not though. Um, I, I can sure. share where, the, where we drew the gates on this. And so we thought, first of all, we got a little PR problem here. And so I looked up what are the five most precious metals. And number five is gold, about $14 a gram. And then we have from there is uh, uh, platinum, then osmium as your C's, the big bulk of the center of that bell curve. And then it's uh, 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 rhodium and then californium. The, the shitty californium, californium is like 12, 12 million a gram and the good stuff's uh, 26 million a gram. And so there's, there's your games athletes. And on the other side, you got your marginally ambulatory. But well, and we, we, had some, we had some gates and, and it, it was interesting how much consensus there were there was in where you might put these partitions in terms of a 400 uh, of, of a 500 meter row time, in terms of a once around the track 400 meters, you know, and and uh, down there at that gold level, so you're potentially glued to the couch, you know, you can do all this stuff, trying to, trying to find a way to get up, you know, all, all those behaviors. Uh, between there. And and mobile was the was the was the goal. And the platinum was mobile to 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 highly mobile. You know, look at them come, get something moves around quickly, ready to go to the gym perhaps. Not to say you can't go to the gym before that, but I really don't want to run classes of twenty five people, each one that needs me to help them out of the chair, grab my fingers and I pull you to your feet. That's not quite the thought. And so, as a prelude to going to the gym, yeah, you, you, we could work through some things on the couch. Is that the goal? Absolutely not. The goal is to reach as broad a swath uh, of, of, of humanity as we possibly can. And uh, there are many, many, many more people glued to the couch. And by, by the way, the need's greatest here. The need's greatest here. The potential for the stimulus to make the greatest difference is here. But that, that group that's uh, uh, marginally ambulatory, to not at all, to okay, mobile, yep, she can get up, <coughs> unassisted, get down the ground without help and get back up without help. Um, in that space, you cannot give a wad. I can exercise you, but I can't publish when I don't do it for you guys. Because there are people that, this is the third time I've asked you to stand up in the past 10 minutes, I'm not gonna bother you again. There's someone for that's a, that's, that's an adult portion. And there's others that can stand up from the couch, go to ground 10 times, you know, and still, they're still working on something. So that there, there was, this has its origins in us realizing that if we're gonna reach that people out there, if we're gonna get the, the uh, counterparts to the games athletes, um, it's gonna have to happen in the home and and we're gonna have to provide the resources that are the inspiration and the practical uh, uh, how-to for the loved ones of those on the couch to, to, uh, to intervene. And you're seeing people graduate from this now, right? From the immobile to the mobile. We've had some people in our laboratory program next door enter into the mainstream classes. That's awesome. Yep. We've got someone down 70 pounds already. We're doing it. We're doing it. And we're doing this in, uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, and in Seattle, and here in Santa Cruz. And I tell you what, we have taken our very best training resources and, uh, and, and some gigs. I mean, look, look, Pat Sherwood and, uh, and uh, Joe Westerman. I mean, those are, and I got, I got uh, Zach Pye and Michelle Moose. These are, these are tier one Flowmaster super trainers 
that are now dedicating the bulk of their training efforts, their, their employment with CrossFit is in uh, refining this program. And you know, it's neat to see. I've got, I've got in our crew, uh, geez, you know, we've got 100 years of training experience put on this thing, and uh, we're learning things. For instance, um, going to the ground and getting back up, carpet's not the best place for that. You know why? It, it, it t- denudes the flesh on elbows of a certain population. So actually, a, a harder surface, like a mat, is actually better than, than a carpet. It's the abrasion factor here. Is interesting. I'd almost rather do it on cement than I would on the carpet. You know? And what are we doing? We're, we're anticipating the fall, and we're anticipating the help I've fallen and can't get up. Yeah. Other related events, both potentially fatal. You could, you could be uninjured in the fall and, and succumb to not being able to get up. Right. And it happens every day in America. Every day in America. And so what we're doing is we're, we're working the marginal capacity to stand. So in our, in our burpee, we're, we're practicing going to ground when you're lightheaded, right? Rather than standing there until you tip over. And then we're practicing getting up. And we've had people right next door for the one gal for the first time in 25 years, unaided, went to ground, and got back up. And it's CrossFit. It's as CrossFit as anything Rich Froning will ever do. And more CrossFit than the diet he claims he's eating. Or his sponsors are. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's amazing work. So I have a million dollar idea for you around this. Uh, I'm not looking for money, but yeah, thanks. But around this area. Well, so yeah, come up with a life-saving idea. Yeah. I've, got, I've got millions. No, this is a great one. So I think if you're going to... You know, we're on target seniors. I think we get Reebok to make CrossFit nanos, some orthopedic nanos, but we'll call them bananas. What do you think? Talk to Reebok. <laughs> yeah. No, this, is, this is really great work. Um, you know, it's something that Chad and I are, and Saxon, who's our third host, are just really passionate about seeing people getting moving in the gym. And we see it every day in the box. Uh, you know, several uh, members that are in that senior class that, you know, every day they're getting thinner, they're getting more active. You see them uh, graduate from the PVC pipe to to uh, the bar, you know, the light bar, and, and just continue to grow. It's it's uh, or even being able to just tie their shoes without yeah, having stress. We got we got one of our seniors here is uh, had kind of an awakening. He's like, right. I thought I'd notice some ass his daughters. Kind of more with it. She's like, yeah, without a doubt, you know. He's like, well, waking up, right, and. Uh, he was choking, telling me that he wanted to bring his friend in. He says, my friend doesn't have a heart. And I mean, what do you mean? Is it just a mean bastard? He says, no, he doesn't have, he doesn't have his heart. He doesn't, you know, I thought he was maybe having a senior moment. He says, no, he's got a medic alert thing. He has no pulse. He's got an uh, external pump that works off a screw. So he has constant blood circulation with no pulse. And he's like, you got to get him in here. And he's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hmm. <laughs> I think. I you know what? <laughs> if, 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 yes, if Stanford wants him here and can give me and can talk to us about what that might look like, you know, like I got physical therapists and physicians on staff. I mean, we can make it happen. We can do anything. Do I want a lot of those? I want people with the mechanical hearts lined up out front? No. But, you know, you made the point earlier in, in our discussion at breakfast that. Uh, this, what we're doing right here, is deadly behavior. Yes. It's deadly behavior. It's taking lives. And when you decide to do something about it, well, this is the first step. Well, you know what? The risk, you just, your risk just went up. Because that's when you're going to fall. But what you have to do, and by the way, this, is, this isn't something peculiar, an oddity, paradox of, of fitness. This is life. And so we, we have to increase our, our risk tolerance. We have to you actually increase your risk to decrease risk. And there's tons of things like that. There, uh, uh, exercise increases the risk of sudden death from a handful of general heart malformations. Being fit decreases the risk. And so what do you have to do? Well, Take the risk to that's right, graduated, you know? It's like, like building a callus. And so, so I love the focus you guys have been pushing out more and more around nutrition. I was watching uh, or reading a post by a games athlete a couple weeks ago, and, and in it, people were asking her how she got her abs, and she said the only way to do it was to eat less and to go to bed hungry four to five days a week. 
bluntly pissed me off, like to no end. And and to their credit, several other games athletes kind of lit her up for it. But I'm just I'm really curious. You know, do, does it worry you at all that there are some, in this case, representatives of the sport of fitness, or would be counterintuitive to what we're discussing here? We learn. We've already learned things about human performance, working with the general public, crazy things. Um, we learn trying to get uh, uh, our parents' pull-ups. We, we discovered the, the value in increasing work capacity with a uh, moderate protein and fat restricted carbohydrate diet, its ability to flens fat and, and allow for muscle development. Um, we learned that ahead of the kind of traditional blood pressure, triglyceride, A1C end of things. And so I could make the argument for restricted carbohydrate in, uh, in terms of force distance and time, in terms of performance. And so at the very far stretches, when we get out there into the Californium, uh, we may see steroids, we may see uh, 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 pathological consumption of carbohydrate? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I, but I, I want to make this point. I just came from saying we learned so much from the public. I gave an example. There have been no good takeaways from the games athletes. They fundamentally provided nothing in terms of our understanding of human performance, other than we could drive it to places it's never been before. If I were to believe the games athletes, uh, uh, Compression fabrics were the deal maker. Everyone fucking had them on. Everyone. Now no one. If you were to believe the athletes, the ice packs. Everyone had to be in an ice bath. You would never get to the, near the podium without the ice bath, and the next year, no ice baths. Then it's the stupid fucking rock tape. Idiocy. No, they have lucky socks and little chants and... And, and they're communicating with Jesus and tattoos, and there's a lot of things going on there that just don't, you know, I'm, yeah, that's, it's, not a, it's not a good environment for learning. It really isn't. Well, it's a bad message. I mean, when I start, I start, I've had the benefit of doing CrossFit now for eight years, and when I started compression socks was the thing. I had more knee socks than a high school girl. I swear to God. Like, just dozens of these things, thinking, oh, man, I'm going to be great at box jumps now. I've, I've got knee socks. The only thing they did was help me not bleed on the box when I hit the box. Otherwise, you know, I was I was every bit as unfit as I started, at least for the first you know year yeah. or so.